So we had a hard time finding U-bolts, and I needed new shocks, and my spring bushings were all worn out. Lift kick time. One week later. Oh yeah, the lift is done. Man, I'm glad I went with the four inch lift instead of the two inch lift. That would have been way too small. Yeah, man, four inches makes a lot of difference. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. We were looking into stuff while we were doing the axle swap, and we found a lot of problem areas that we were going to have with springs, bushings, shocks, all that stuff. And we added up the cost, and so we decided, hey, let's just get a lift kit. We got the Rough Country 4 inch lift for a 1973 to 76, I believe, uh, Chevy K20. It's about 500 bucks. Comes with new springs, comes with new U bolts. The main thing we needed was U bolts. Um, we couldn't find them anywhere. This isn't rocket science. People have been building this truck up for decades. So we're going to do this and hopefully a weekend. That pin there is the hole. That notch is what the whole pin needs to go in. So the axle's got to go forward. So let's. So what we're going to do is jack it. The jack back up a few, and then check out our axle situation here. This ideally would be done with two or three people. Our axle's too far forward now. Alright. We gotta wait for dad on this one. It's a two person job. One person's got a spot where the jack's going down. Interesting job. We'll see. All right. Okay. So, what's the issue? That moves while you're trying to put the jack down. So, if you can just let it down real slow, I can follow with, with this. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Up. Oh, it needs to go to the side a bit. The whole axle. I ended up having to take the factory blocks out. These things, I'd say it's about two inches. So, it's a leveling kit, but still four inch lift. And we replaced them with the four inch blocks. Um, pretty easy. Took about half an hour with Dad's help. Um, now we're putting U bolts on. Pretty simple, but I'm not going to jinx anything. Then after that, we got to take the shock off, replace them with the new one, and then do the front. All right, so update on the progress. Fantastic news. I found the stickers. That is the most woeful of all mods right there. That's the big thing I was happy for. There you have it. Increased performance, higher attractivity. For that lift kit. Anyway, uh, the blocks are under there, the U-bolts are on and good, ready to go. Um, I took the shocks off. Sounds cool. And we're about to put the new shocks in. It comes with top hardware, however not bottom hardware. So we're going to have to pick some up from either Tractor Supply or Kohl's Hardware. Overall comparison, um, this is the old shock, like that, this is the new shock. Either way, it's an upgrade. Uh, we weighed the new blocks, they weighed about 10 pounds combined. These blocks, however, weigh about 6 or 7 pounds. Alright, so, we're going to end it here today. We've got the blocks on, U-bolts on, all the hardware for the U-bolts are on. We've got the shocks hanging from the top. We don't have bottom bolts, which Rough Country, if you're watching, you should include bottom bolts because they still break. Um, but still, they're hanging. We got to pick up some new hardware for that. Um, this is the stuff that came off. Um, we weighed the blocks that were on there originally. We haven't weighed these though. So combined, that's an overall weight of about 46 pounds. If you're wondering why we're not putting these back on, it's because if you can see here that. It's not supposed to be bent. I don't like the bent ones. No. It's not okay. But we're actually uh, losing weight with this part of the swap. So, that's a we bonus. Put 10 pounds on, we're taking 46 pounds off, so. It's the first time we've lost weight with we're something here. down 36 pounds with the suspension change. Yeah. And these, these do not look like factory helper springs. Uh, no. They look kind of familiar to me as some of the stuff you might have bought in JC Whitney. 
back when I was a kid. So these are probably aftermarket. So no big loss scrapping these. No need to feel nostalgia for them or anything like that. Are you? Not to worry. I have a permit. This just says I can do what I want. And uh, if you do need to haul heavy and you got to worry about helper springs, then step up to the modern world and use airbags. Yeah. All right, so what we're doing today is we're trying to get front springs in on the 4-inch lift kit. We're trying to get the normal springs out. This one's giving us a real pain because you can't bang it out with the hammer and it's not seemed to be coming out with the impact. I tried and it just didn't even... Is it just turning in the bushing? No, it's not turning at all. Hmm. Yeah, well, probably just needs some more muscle. Yep. Little tip for you here. When you need to hammer on the end of the thread, you don't want to mess up the thread in case you have to reuse yeah. that bolt. That's why punches exist. So put the nut on it. Thread it on as much as you can until it's fitting flush. Okay? Mm-hmm. You don't want any thread sticking out, but you want lots of thread holding. The way when you beat on it, it doesn't break the thread. Gotcha. Now on the back of this, we did have to loosen the uh, exhaust pipe coming off the collector on the header. So that was fun. But that's going to be different on every one of these old trucks. Yeah, that's not moving. You've been uh, working carpentry for a little bit too much. Okay, right. you're holding it up here like you're tapping something into a frame. Let's say I'm holding it about halfway down. Yeah, and you need to beat it. Gotcha. Leverage and okay. muscle. Yep. Out. Hold out. Uh, scratch up the paint. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Alright. Old springs out, so we're gonna go ahead and weigh. And we'll just do math. So what are we at? 32. Give or take. 32 pounds stock springs. Okay. We don't like them though. Carefully flip this over and just set it on the center. I'm gonna see how this is. This one, last one, 32. This one weighs about 40. So what was the old one? Uh, 32, so adding about 16 pounds to the truck. You gotta lift up on the spring. I think I got it. I got it. Half of it. That's close. Oh god, it's so close. Okay, we've got this spring under. It took about two hours. Um, we're gonna we found bolts. The rear bolts were reusable, and we figured out that we had bolts in our parts bin that were perfect for the front. That but they're perfect for the front. So we're gonna put them in. Uh we're gonna do it on this spring first just to make sure that it fits, and then if they do, we're gonna Okay. Right now. We're very offset with the axle. These springs are just in position with some screwdrivers holding them in place. But look at the arch on that. All right, let's get back to it. Yep. In the meantime, I'm going to get one picture of your truck as it looks squatted. I Be ashamed. Yeah. Be ashamed. Bit more. Wait, no, stop. Okay, you can use a hammer to tap it. Where's the hammer? If it's lined up, because you don't want to mess up the thread. Hammer, stop. Where's the hammer? Probably in the building. Right now, I'm going to tap it. 
All you got to do is just tap it in. Just tap it in. gonna do is we're gonna take the sway bar off because uh, things can't be easy. In these trucks the plate for the axles is tied into the sway bar but I think we need to extend these make this taller because they don't want to line up. Okay. okay. Put some hardware on. What we did was we took the sway bar and U-bolts off, we took the U-bolt um, mounts off, and now they're back on the truck. Um, the sway bar is going to need to be extended if it's going to run with the 4 inch lift. Overall this lift is pretty easy to install. I wouldn't, if you have a lift, like a full 2 or 4 post lift, then this would take 3 to 4 hours like it says on the website, but if you don't, a few days, maybe a week. I don't know. It would take three to four hours if it was a new truck yeah. and not rusty. But not an old. We're dealing with 50 yeah. years of rusty grind. So we're going to put some new bolts on. We're finally bolting things in on the front, besides the springs. Let's get to it. There we go. Don't ever start decking it on unless you're sure the threads are on. You're going to have to deck that off. They are crooked. Make sure it's going in reverse. Okay. Okay. When I say stop, stop. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I'll use the torque wrench after this. Okay. okay. But that's good enough for now to hold things in place. Okay. So let's get this other one lined up. Okay. How much of a headache was that? A lot. Yeah. So some of this will get better as the uh, the springs settle, but a big part of our issue was these shackles here. Uh, we're trying to reuse the original ones and the rubber on them is just really stiff. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot of prying and stuff to make everything yeah. fit. Uh, next order of business, the get it off the jack on. stands. Springs are on, springs are bolted. Yeah, let's get it off the jack stands. I don't want this truck squatted anymore. Okay. All right. Get out of the way. Alright, first time lift front and rear on its own weight, no jack stand whatsoever. Good bottom, but okay. It's perfect. Oh, it's 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 very level. That is very level. I'm glad it's not squatting. I want to put a level on that to see how level it is. Yes. Where's uh, that's almost perfectly level. That's perfectly level. Wow. Also. That's, that's an issue. It's a big issue. That's, it used to be here. Now it's here. Oh, this is very hot. This is going to be fun. Now those springs are going to settle. They'll come down a little bit. Another day, we're trying to get the shocks installed. Um, we took, we're taking a side break installing the shocks because we're having trouble with this steering knuckle and it's putting up a fight it's all rusted in it's a common issue um we figured out that i need new tie rod and rotors so that's annoying um the factory half ton drive shafts hooked right up to the 44 so happy about that however we're having issues with the rear 
Um, gonna need some sort of conversion U joint for that. Which is very annoying. So we're gonna get the shocks tightened down by hand and then move on. All right, so after about an hour and a half of hammering um, and using the blowtorch, we finally got the old steering knuckle off right here. That's hot. That's hot. You know, I used to say, that's hot. Sounds perfect. Now what do you say? That's hot. No, you do not. It's hot in here. Come on. Um, we're putting this on. We forgot about the nut cones things that are right there. I thought they were washers. But they're off, and now we're putting the new one on. Instead of replacing this, you replace this. And we've got bolts, but we're having trouble putting them on. So that's the idler arm. A lot of times with lifts, especially on independent front suspension vehicles, that's what you change to accommodate for your steering height. And this little square body, you change this steering arm here. So, it's another day in the garage. Last night, we got the steering rod hooked up. This one has a bump steer thing, so that's helpful. Steering stabilizer. Steering stabilizers, thank you. But that's hooked up now, got that last night. Um, we took a look at the brakes, and by the looks of it, these, we're gonna see if they can work. We, if not, we need to buy new ones. Um, calipers, they seem to be the same off the half-ton axles, so I took the half-tons and Put the three and put them on the three quarter ton axle. The reason we're not using the three quarter ton calipers is because everything's good on those except for the rubber seal. So we're just going to use these because it's easier. Um, what I'm about to do right now is hook up brakes and put on the on the lock brake line relocation kit. Uh, and then the front end's pretty much buttoned up. The things are coming along nice. Everything's hooked up except for brakes. Calipers are on, everything like that. And then I'm trying to come up here. I got the metal brake line disconnected. And then I come up here to take off the rubber hose. And the rubber hose is tack welded in place. It's something you're going to come across with a lot on old cars. Because people just need to get a job done. And old cars are old cars to some people. And they don't do anything. So we're going to chisel and hammer it out. And then we'll get continue. Alright, so... We're having some issues with, uh, what are they called? What are those called? Brake lines? No, not brake lines. We Brake lines. We had to order new brake lines because, um, well, the rubber was just bad. That's why you don't tack weld something on that goes bad that quickly. But we're trying to connect drive shafts right now. The front one was not an issue. It connected. Um, rear drive shaft was a bit too short. So... We have the three quarter ton drive shaft, and it's right here. We're having issues with this thing right here on the half ton. So we decided, hey, I don't know. Anyway, we decided, hey, let's take off half the thing and see if the, the gears mesh, and they do. So we're gonna put three quarter ton one, which is longer and has the right size thingamabobs here um, on. The big difference is the K20 drive shaft is longer. It's longer. But it looks like we need a longer drive shaft for because the rear of this. Shift. The half tone one literally fell out when we just tried to lift it up. And so this one's longer and it, it should be diff. better. Because bigger is better. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Lining up the angle can be tricky. So it's hopefully the last day on the axle and lift kit install. Um, we got a conversion U joint so we can run a half ton axle with three quarter ton, sorry, the half ton drive shaft on a three quarter ton axle. Um, we have brake lines to install front and rear. We need to break, bleed the brakes. Uh, we need to top off, the, we need to fill the axles with fluid because we drain those. Um, if not, we got to drain them again or just drain them in general. Uh, and then we got a test drive. We're probably gonna be pulling the late nighter. So let's hope we make a big push and finish this tonight.
So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the old paper gasket off the front diff cover so we can get a new RTV sealant gasket on here and then put the, the diff cover back on and then fill it with oil. And then the front axle will be done. Uh, we're having issues with the rear in terms of the bolt stripped out. So we're gonna have to weld um, something else that we can get a wrench around onto the bolt um, and then get it out then. And then we gotta find a new bolt for that. Um, we're gonna, we have a hole in the diff cover on the rear end too. Um, I'm gonna buy a new one eventually, pretty soon hopefully. So we're just gonna grind that, grind the paint off and then just put a, just go with the welder. That should be good enough. Put that back on, fill it up with um, diff oil. And then we have the brake lines on the front end installed and then on the rear end installed. Um, so after that, we bleed the, bleed the brakes and then that's it, then we test it out. All right, we're getting ready to put the diffs on. However, um, we've got a little tiny hole here that looks more like a puncture hole, not a rust hole. It's weird is that it's coming in, not out. So something didn't break, something went in. We don't know. My theory is a bullet, but Dad says no. Anyway, um, we're gonna patch it up. I'm just gonna do two spot welds here and make sure it doesn't pull up. Make sure it's smooth, RTB sealant, chuck them on and then fill the diffs with oil. And then diffs are done and then we can move on to brakes. It's a bit later, we got sidetracked shooting European Hornets with BB guns, it was fun. Um, now we're gonna bleed the brakes. After this, we're gonna do diff covers back on and then fill them up and then test drive. But Blitting the brakes, it's pretty simple, but it's also very annoying to do. I helped Dad on his motorcycle. Basically, what you do is you fill up where your brake fluid goes, and then you push the brake a bunch of times to get it through the system and get out any air because you don't want pressure brakes, and then be like, oh no, it's not working. So, to save us some pain, we're going to use my dad's vacuum pump that he rigged up from some old medical equipment that he uses for um, air conditioning stuff because he's cool like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on the bleeder valve and then when it starts, when the brake fluid starts coming up through, I'm gonna pull this and it's gonna tighten down and stop the brake fluid from coming up. Okay, ready? Yep. Valve's open already. Valve's open. Is there fluid up in the master cylinder? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm gonna be amazed if this works. How do I tell if it's coming up? It's working, it's nice and quiet. How do I tell if the brake fluid's coming out? You will oh, see the fluid good. going through the wand. Uh, okay. Good. Well, I know why it's going through the wand. You get air bubbles in the line while you're drawing vacuum. Yeah. That is normal because the area around the thread isn't sealed tight. Yeah. It's actually pulling air from there. Cool. How long does this take? We can probably we'll get the other side and then we'll test these by hand without the vacuum up and make sure it's actually out of air. Because I think we've got it through now. We're just pulling air from around the fitting there. $2 worth of washers is why I can't get my truck running and out of the garage tonight. And it's because Rough Country sent the wrong size washer. It's always something. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Dad, Dad Said We Could. I'm Jim. I'm Henry. I'm Jackson. I'm Anna. And today, hopefully, is the last day of working on my truck certificate. We had an issue last night with washers because the copper ones that came with the kit didn't fit. And we tried to use brass washers, which is what we had, but we didn't have copper washers and we got brake fluid leaking everywhere. So today, it's the last day of school. Um, picked up some new washers, we got some friends. Um, I'm gonna put the new washers on, bleed the brakes, put on diff covers, and then fill the diff diffs with oil. And then we're gonna drive the truck, hopefully. Hopefully. So, and we all wanna get this done in two hours so we can go swimming, so. Down in the swimming hole. Here we go. That's made of cement. Yes.
11, 30, well, it's the summer. It's awesome. We're high, we're high schoolers now. Correction, you are a high schooler. Okay, Votech is still a we high schooler. We are Votech Rams. I always have a point. Okay? No, she doesn't. I'm a middle schooler. We've always got Yeah, Henry's a middle schooler. He graduated. See, early. Henry's actually happy about that. Yeah, Anna, the thing is, me and Jarrett always have points. You don't. Doubtful. Oh, come on, Anna. How confident is this? Yeah. We are the confident bros. Just when we're talking about cars, we have points. You don't know anything about cars. You don't have points. Be that as it may, I'm you the You know they have person. four wheels and go vroom vroom. That's about it, yeah. See? Even though my dad's mechanic does his mechanic as a hobby. One girl on my bus knows more about cars than you. Who? Some random girl on my bus. But he had one point in the last five minutes. If it was in the front, okay. why were you putting it in? Jim, how's your end looking? Uh, clean. This side's almost done. So, I mean, if someone who's free wants to grab the deflow. I feel it, too. So wherever the deflow is, you know how your truck goes together. Mind? Yes, I do. Oh, you got it all over your front axle. Womp womp. I need a bolt. No, but where are the bolts? <laughs> I have the bolts. I need the wrench. Uh, <laughs> There you go. Got him. You can let Just go now. Just it up finger tight. Okay. That'll work. Real smooth. Jackson, why don't you take the screwdriver and clean out the bolt holes, and then Jim can put it in. Clean out the hole, Jackson. Okay. Sounds good. You know, I'm there. Line us up, and then That's adorable. You guys are holding hands. Hey, cameraman should be talking. Yeah. What? Yes, he is, but in the future. I thought he was riding a dinosaur. Yeah, I know, but but on make the, up your mind. But on the award itself, it shows Lincoln. It's massive muscles. That's a Lincoln. Oh, it was just a no, dude. the person <laughs> Lincoln. Yes, it's bodybuilder Lincoln. Bodybuilder Lincoln. No, Lincoln was so it's like yeah, yeah, I know it wasn't bodybuilder. So I was like, if Lincoln. No, wouldn't that be cool if one of our presidents was a bodybuilder? That would be hilarious. Awesome at the same time. Picture, I'm picturing Dw Dwayne Johnson as Wait, president. Arnold right Wait a minute. No, yes. I saw in the news that no, Arnold Schwarzenegger cannot be president because he's Australian. Oh, that's nice. Wait, I heard on the news that Dwayne Johnson actually might be running politically. Doubtful. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. No, I it's Trump and things. Biden. That weird political show. No, it's going to be Trump and blood. Biden Constitutionally, again. Constitutionally, Trump can... Let's stop getting political. What? Oh, yeah, the point. I will get this on your arm, and then you'll smell. It's red orange. That's what I just said. You said it's orange red. Same thing. No, it's not. Orange red implies that it's orange. That's more orange than red. Red orange implies that it's more red than orange. Why don't we just agree Jim, you're a color. car geek, not, not a color theorist. Yeah. Exactly. I'm a color. Remember, everyone, while we are arguing what color this is, it is not purple. Yes, we can look. <laughs> what? The Imperial Marvel That's Matter. the. It's the Star Wars theme song. Oh, ready? Oh, Jim, ready? It's the bad guy theme Your song. song? Strangest points. Shut yeah, up and. Oh my God. <laughs> We're doing our jobs. Exactly. Trying to do it without talking. No. But we can't do that. So where are we at, Jackson? So we got the front diff on. Uh, all the bolts are in. So we can finish the back, build, put the gaskets on. Either I'll work on the axle cap and he can work on the actual axle or flip flop. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully we can get this back together and then go on the brakes. Sweet. Also, he thinks it's axle cap. I say it's gift cover. It's Same like, difference. It's like British and Americans over aluminum and aluminum. 
All right, what I'm doing now is I'm tightening down the bolts on the rear differential cover. And then after that, we can tighten down this bolt and then get the brake lines mounted up. Then we can move the brakes and hopefully we're done. Do you know what time it is? No. What? What's, what's with that? What's with, what's with that? What? How late is it? What? How late is it? I don't know. I don't know what time it is. Yeah. That's good. Alright. That's it? That's buttoned up. Now we can we'll help the guys leave the brakes. After throwing tissues at me. Those are tissues, those are oily paper towels. They're ten times worse. Great. Yes. So how are we going to get brakes okay. on there? So right now we are bleeding the brakes for the truck. So as he uh, pumps the brake fluid, th fluid through, this will get lower. So we just have to keep filling it up and bleeding the brakes. We'll get all the air out and that'll see if we have any like leaks that we need to fix. Alright, let's get to it. Okay. There we go. Not a girl. There we go. Push it again, Henry, and hold it. There we go. Atta go. Alright, keep an eye on that, Jackson. I think it's time to fill it up. So the reason we're doing this is so so our brakes work these are disc disc brakes. Front anyway. So Bye. how this works is the fluid goes through the brakes and that'll whenever you press the brakes, basically the fluid contracts, which is or fluid pushes and Clamps the or pulls and kinds like hydraulics. Um, clamps and that's what causes your brakes. But air in the brake isn't good because I'll mess up and your brakes won't be as strong. So what this does is it pulls all the air out of the brake lines. Uh, so you have good brakes. Alright, we got the front two brakes brake split. And then we got the rear driver side brake bled. Um, we got the diffs on, the diff covers on. Um, you want to explain what we're next? So, we're going to put the diffs Yeah, we, we need to get the passenger side rear brake on, fill the diffs up with the oil, and check the leaks. That's it then. Hopefully, we're driving this by Friday. It's Tuesday. Friday, right? Friday. We could get this done tomorrow. Thank God. Okay. All right. We're thanks. going swimming. Thanks for the help, Jackson and Anna. Thank you yep. very much. Uh, We're going to go swimming now. Bye-bye. I'll work on it. Hopefully. The next day. All right. We're almost ready to get Jim's truck out of the garage. Jim, what have you done to it? We've greased up everything that needs grease. We put on um, a new U, U joint for the trout shaft. Um, I've used a spare part off one of my parts trucks, the GMC, and I put in uh, a new steering pump because the old one squeaked a lot, and it's annoying. And I hope this one works because I don't want to put money into a new steering pump. I want you to work smarter, not harder, lad. All the brakes are bled. Everything like that is done. The RTV sealants me and Jackson did are working pretty good, if we do say so ourselves. Um, so that means we did good on that. So start the truck up. find when she saw smoke. I didn't put it there. Whoa, what was that? It was a Felipe. I didn't put it there. Doesn't Let's do a short. Hey, just look. <laughs> this is why you put tools away.
All right, Jim, whenever you're ready, burn out. Don't brake load it. Just nail it. Okay. Things away to the lift kit. This truck is now a combination of modified and both repaired. So one of the big issues that we were having was the power steering pump. It squeaked a lot. I replaced that with one off the GMC parts truck and now it doesn't squeak. It's beautiful. However, now we've lost some steering. So we need to adjust the steering. We hope it's adjustable. It probably is. Um, these tires are also running really heavy. 60 PSI a piece, I think. Um, that's for dad's truck because he usually runs pretty heavy. But this truck is a ton lighter than dad's. So we can probably bring that down a bit. Um, the brakes, they're the big issue right now. Um, these are straight off the parts axles. We knew we had to fix them. Um, we haven't yet. Um, so we're gonna tear rear reels off and we're gonna take off the drums and see if we need to buy a hardware kit and we need to get new rotors. Honestly though, I think we both learned that when diving in and modifying a truck, there's always something more to do. Yes, first like, you wanna get an axle swap and then that leads to U-bolts not fitting and they're really expensive so you can lift, lift. And then you have issues with power steering because you got bigger tires and wheels and then it just goes on and on and on from there. And some lift kits are for looks, some are for hardcore crawling. This, I need a good daily driver. So not too hardcore, but at the same time, not too light duty. So it's all needs to be fine tuned yet. So overall, I really love my truck now. Um, I'm definitely gonna save up for rear springs to improve ride quality and the squatting, which is always very bad. Squatted trucks. Yeah. But we're probably gonna do a spring swap in a few months when we do the bed swap because I got that thing.